Stu, for the life of me, I looked at this story and I just didn't re- recall it at all. And I think this is this tells you something that we have so many things going on in our country right now that a story this big could elude us or just talk about it once and then move on. Yeah, Listen to this. To be clear, this didn't elude us, right? It was actually in no, it, the show prep, in the newsletter. If you're, a, if you're a subscriber to the uh, newsletter, which is all, gives all the show prep that we do every day, you got this on September 21st, 2023. Uh, it was the lead story uh, that day in our prep, yeah. and we talked about it. But you know, you're right. These things just come and go because of, every day is a new catastrophe. Yeah. Listen to this one. The Biden administration since disbanded Homeland Intelligence Expert Group, which reminds me, make sure you listen to the new podcast, uh, The Beck Story. The, the third one comes out tomorrow. Is it the third one or fourth one? And it's all about experts and how these experts, it's all part of the progressive plan for the last hundred years. The world will start making sense to you like nobody's business. Anyway, so that's the Homeland Intelligence Experts Group. They planned an influence operation to persuade mothers and teachers to inform on dissident parents and students suspected of domestic extremism. Now, as we told you after the passing of the Patriot Act, be careful because terrorism can be an, one man's freedom fighter is another man's terrorist. One man's terrorist is another man's freedom fighter. And we're seeing that. We're seeing that all the time. If you are standing up and you're standing up peacefully, you can go to jail. You can go to prison. You can stand up peacefully and, in fact, kneel down and pray in front of an abortion clinic, and you can go to jail now for 10 years. But you can burn down an abortion clinic, and they don't even look for you. The panel created in September of last year was to provide advice and perspectives on intelligence and national security efforts. I'm quoting. They included the Obama-era uh, CIA director, John Brennan. Gee, how many times have we seen his name come up? And it's all related to bad, oppressive stuff. Also, the ex-director of the National Intelligence Agency, James Clapper. Now, these were the guys that during the 2020 uh, election were showing their credentials. Hey, I just want you to know, I'm a big wig in the intelligence department, and let me tell you, this Hunter Biden laptop, that's dangerous Russian in- disinformation. Okay. Conservative nonprofit, thank God for American First Legal, alleged in November, in a lawsuit in 2023, November, uh, that the group was stacked with Democratic partisans. Now listen to this. This is how this thing was stopped. It was stacked with Democratic partisans and violated the Federal Advisory Committee Act because of its lack of balance. The Biden administration's inappropriate influence over it and its lack of public notice and participation. DHS agreed to disband the group and to provide uh, American First Legal with the internal records as part of an out-of-court settlement in May. I just want you to know, They don't stop these things. They rename them, they break them up, and they do them in other ways. You can't say you are a lover of our democracy and you're trying to save democracy and put a secret council together that is encouraging people to look at political dissent and report on those people so the government can do something. In the notes from a September 2023 meeting, the Brennan Clapper Group discussed ways for the Department of Homeland Security to increase efforts to collect intelligence on Americans across the country and to get into local communities in a non-threatening way. Members noted, quoting, Americans have an ambivalent feeling of telling on each other, citing the failure of see something, say something. No, we don't. We're not ambivalent about that. We don't want to do that. If I see somebody that is breaking the law and I think they're doing something that looks like it might be terroristic in nature. Yeah, I will call the police. 
but I'm not snooping and spying on my neighbors. The problem one attendee, uh, attendee summarized was, quote, how do we get people or how do people safely report a concern about their neighbors? One solution proposed at the meeting was to reclassify. Listen to this. One proposal was to reclassify political dissent as a public health crisis and to encourage Americans to report family members or neighbors to the federal government if they displayed any concerning behavior. Yeah, well, here's some concerning behavior. Trump derangement syndrome. Here's some concerning behavior. Putting together the Stasi. Here's some concerning uh, behavior. Allowing illegals and gangs to come into our country, rape and kill our children, and still do nothing about it. Who do I call for that? Quote, to get a mother or a teacher to come forward, it needs to be a public health catcher's mitt. So, so they're saying, a Trump derangement syndrome, they're saying, if you disagree, it's because you have mental health problems. Now, Stu, what was one of the ways that the Stasi and the Nazis could get people at the beginning before they just said, we don't care, uh, to get people off the streets who disagreed with them? Where, where did they put some of those people before the concentration camps? Hmm. Um, where did they put Asylums. Them? Oh, yeah, that's very true. Asylums. Mm-hmm. They put them in the crazy house because they were just crazy. Because to go against what is good for the common good is clearly some sort of mental health disorder. Mm. If DHS could not convince mothers and teachers to become informants, one member of the group suggested the feds, listen to this, should turn to corporate America as a resource of intelligence on their employees. May I ask... What more information does our government need on us as individuals? They already know. We know that they are listening to us. Now, I don't mean that they're actually somebody's on the other line listening in. They don't need that. They now have AI and keywords. So if you are on the telephone and you're talking to somebody and you mention the word assassination, that keyword uh, highlights it and that record is pulled out. And that's when it's analyzed. We already know they're doing this. We already know they track. If you're a person of interest, and be careful on what that means, if you're a person of interest, what can they do? Well, they'll go in to your social network, and they will see, and we know they're doing this without being people of interest, just topics that they find disturbing. So if you're online, they will look, where did that idea come from? They'll do a tree, and they'll do a tree to all of your friends and relatives to see who is spreading this. They're doing that. What else, what other information do they need from corporate America? My gosh, have you ever worked for a really vindictive person? Have you ever worked at a place where your bosses were just scumbags? Can you imagine if they had the power to report you to the federal government on just any old thing? They said that uh, the corporate America should be considered as a resource of intelligence on their employees because there is an industry ecosystem. Companies are internally collecting open sources. Can we engage and use those products? Plans have strong echoes of East Germany's secret police agency, the Stasi, which relied on a network of unofficial informants to report friends, family, and neighbors as potential dissidents to the socialist regime between 1950 and 1990. So do you know what happened? Do you know why when people come here, The thing that people used to always say about America is they're so trusting. Americans are just so open and they'll invite you into their house and, you know, they'll just they're just talk to you. And it's there's nowhere on earth like that. Do you know why? 
because we've never had a Stasi. We've never had to worry about our neighbors on the payroll of the federal government turning us in. I'm sorry, we did during Woodrow Wilson. We did all of this for three years under Woodrow Wilson. And it is why there wasn't a single progressive elected for 10 years, because it took our breath away. Thanks to American First Legal, we're able to get the Biden's team personal documents outlining the strategy to monitor and intimidate any dissenting views. It's shocking to see such intolerance and paranoia in written form. The revelations are the first installment of what the AFL is calling the Deep State Diaries. Uh, They promise that many more documents obtained are going to be released soon. Now, you want to talk about releasing documents. Here's the other thing that our federal government is doing. This is why Stu and I lost track of this story until, until AFL came out and sued and won. Because there's so many of these things. Let me tell you something else. If you believe in, in democracy, one man, one vote, which we have that portion when we go to vote for a representative, that's why we're a representative republic, a, democratic, a democratically elected representative government, a republic. Anyway, um, If you believe one man, one vote, then you should be the strongest person on voter fraud. You should be the number one person saying, wait a minute, wait a minute. I believe the people and the people alone should decide. Then you should be the strongest in standing up and saying, and no one should be able to influence that. Notice they try to take the money out of it. Okay. But they leave all of those loopholes open for people like George Soros. And as long as their party is doing it, it's fine. I don't want my party doing it. I don't want any party doing it. I want one man, one vote. There's no reason our elections are not secured by blockchain right now. There's no reason for this. One of the first executive orders that Joe Biden put in was his voter access executive order. And... What this, what this, let me say this, all that we know is that it was an all government executive order. So every branch, every, every part of our government was ordered by the president to make sure that they can give and grant voter access to as many people as possible. Now, we have, we have sued the government. We, as people, we have sued the government for it. We have issued FOIAs, watchdog groups, election integrity advocates. They suspect that Biden is using taxpayer money to further his campaign for reelection. This is Executive Order 14019. The executive order requires all federal agencies to use federal funds, hmm, Biden bucks, and resources to promote access to voting. Even though it promotes the executive uh, order, the Biden administration, as benign, the Biden administration is taking a variety of measures to order, uh, to make sure that this is under wraps, that their voter registration plan is kept from any kind of daylight. In particularly, the administration is steadfastly denying Freedom of Information Act requests and battling in court to hide the details of how the executive order is being implemented. Why wouldn't you want people to know how you're making voting easier? The administration has even invoked presidential privilege on two occasions, one involving a public records lawsuit by a watchdog organization. Voter integrity groups, again, like American First Legal Foundation, has also filed uh, lawsuits attempting to find information about Biden bucks. Even when the Biden administration does provide documents in a response to an information request about Biden bucks executive order, the documents are redacted in outrageous way. In at least one case, all of the communication that we that was FOIA'd was blacked out except for two words. 
Those two words, this is. That's all they would allow you to see. Information about how the USDA is registering voters is especially important since it deals with predominantly Democratic voter groups, such as welfare recipients. One concern is the USDA may be issuing letters to the state agencies that administer SNAP and WIC programs, instructing them to conduct voter registration activities in a partisan manner. The Biden administration is also refusing to be transparent about its listening session discussing the executive order held notoriously with uh, partisan far-left organizations such as the George Soros Open Society Policy Center. They are not being transparent. Does that mean that they're doing something they're proud of? Does that mean they're doing something that they think you're going to be happy about? When they are just opening up the borders and letting anybody in, and they'll tell you all about it, but they won't tell you about what they're doing to register voters as the federal government, problem, big problem.